Hey, 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 welcome back to a live a day for the month of May. And tonight I'm going to do for you, originally I had on the recipe, on the schedule was uh, green beans. I was gonna show you some barbecue sides. And tonight I decided that I'm gonna do something different. So we have our friend, the Bella, the, um, the Instapot, and we are going to start by putting it on saute. So what we're gonna be making tonight is a Southern favorite called um, butter beans, which is basically lima beans. Um, to cut the cooking time a little bit, I did pre-soak my beans, even though I did tell you, you know, from, um, from beans, from hard beans to cooked beans in 45 minutes, I'm thinking we might be able to get away with about 15 or 20, because I did pre-soak. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up my Instapot and you can tell it's not hot enough because I can touch it. So I'm gonna go get a couple of ingredients. So hang tight and and check out my beautiful collection of hand sanitizers. Isn't that lovely? Yes, thank you, COVID. I'll be right back. The Instapot is set at the saute setting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil and I gotta go snag some butter. Cause you know, it's butter beans. Now traditionally you would use bacon or pork fat. Um, you can also put sausage into this or whatever you happen to have handy. Um, I will tell you the very first time that I had these down here, I went to some barbecue joint in the middle of freaking nowhere and um, they had this on the buffet. Now, for those of you who have never eaten um, Texas barbecue, it's a bizarre thing, okay? So you basically go in and there's these people cutting meat and giving it to you on butcher paper. And then they give you a half a loaf of bread. It's, it's a really, yeah, if you've never experienced it before, you're gonna freak out a little bit. But anyway, so this place is known for their butter beans and they had it on the buffet. And the buffet is usually where they keep the, the hot sauce, which is your barbecue sauce, but it's hot. And then they also keep the pickled onions, they keep the pickles and um, any other accoutrement that this particular barbecue place is known for. Um, they usually do like maybe a cream corn or they do green beans and bacon. Um, and in this particular one, they did the butter beans. So um, my, my, I'm not quite sizzling yet. I'm getting there. I'll be right back. So I got me, I got me the spoon. So, all right, so kind of warming up a little bit. Let me go grab a tiny bit of butter. Now, I'm not quite used to working at this angle, so you know what, and I'm gonna cut this hair off. I am gonna cut this hair off. Please tell me in the comments below, do not cut your hair off. God, I wanna cut my hair off. My birthday is June 11th, and I wanna just kind of like make over this hair because it is making me nuts, especially this. I am. I feel like friggin' Belle in Beauty and the Beast that has the little hair, and you know, so one of the things I wanted to show you is this. This is a butter dish. Now, a lot of people don't know that you can actually keep butter out. You can keep it out, mostly. Um, you don't want it to get super, super soft because there is that possibility of rancidity, but it just comes in so freaking handy when you wanna do something that you need melted butter, or very soft butter. So, the first thing that I'm gonna do, now I've got my butter and I've got my olive oil going. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add one medium onion, chopped. Where'd you go? There you go, okay. So I've got one medium onion, throwing it in there, and I'm going to let that cook down a little bit. And 
And then I have a half a stalk of celery. And I'm going to let that cook down a little bit. And I'll be right back. You can already smell that beautiful oniony. And you see the onions are getting a little bit softer. We're gonna keep going. We got a little bit to go before they're soft, soft. So, one more thing. So we're still a cooking. Cook, 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 cook. Now you have to be kind of careful with the salt on this one, because we're going to be putting in smoked neck bones, smoked pork neck bones. And when you use any of your smoked products, smoked turkey legs, pork neck bones, ham hocks, whatever you end up using, you're going to end up with a product that the part of the smoking process is salting them or soaking them in brine or something along those lines and so you're going to end up with kind of a salty a little bit of a salty so you have to be really really careful what you what you add okay so we're still getting a little translucent in here i'm going to add the garlic now so what i've got is i've got three good size cloves of garlic and i'm going to throw them in too and we're going to start cooking now do, 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 stir, 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 and I'll be right back. I know you guys are just like getting this wonderful notice. The fan is not on. For the last time I did one, that the fan was on, and I got comments about, turn the fan off. Oh, it's giving us, you know, breaking us out. So, hold on. I'll be right back. I will tell you, y'all almost got a demonstration on coffee. You know why? I was reading this article that this girl thought that the only way to make coffee was in a curry. She had no idea about how to make a coffee in a coffee pot or with a percolator or with a French press or with a Vietnamese press. It didn't matter. She didn't know how to make coffee except in a curry. Oh my God. I think, I think I'm gonna be adding that to my lectures. You're probably, I, I'm going to teach you all how to make it. The lifeblood. Alright, so anyways, everything is beautifully soft now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the beans and the hocks. Or actually, in this case, the neck bones. Now, I just took these right out of the freezer. Because remember I told you that the beauty of the Instapot doesn't matter if that's frozen. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> so now I'm adding the beans. Now this is a lima bean. This is what's known as a butter bean or a lima bean. I've basically cleaned them, skinned them, those that I wanted to skin. And we've got them in there. They're all surrounding that nice big chunk of beef. I'm sorry, in this case, pork. I'm going to turn you around so you can see it all. See? So we got the beans and all that other good stuff. We got water over here. So we're going to add the water to the pot. So, now, usually when you're doing beans, you want everything to cover. So in this case, I'm just at the cover range. So let me get everybody where they need to be. 
and I want just a little bit more water because I'm just a little iffy on this volume. So excuse me a second. Okay, perfect. That's the perfect amount. Now, for, for me, I'm just going to throw in a chili pod. You don't want to do a bunch of chili pods. Just, just two little chili pods. Smack them, snap them, put them in there. You don't need a lot. Okay, so I'm not even going to add pepper because I've got the, you know, because with the butter beans, you want flavor, but you don't want an overpowering flavor. You want this gentle, delicious, smooth flavor. So if you put too much in there, you end up having all, all spice and no flavor because you're overwhelmed. Now I have my, my favorite Chinese um, chicken bouillon. So I'm just going to put in two tiny scoops because remember the pork is very very salty So we don't want things too salty So we're just going to stir that up a little bit do, 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 do. Everybody's rocking and rolling And We're going to put on the lid So remember with an instapot you want to make sure that this little guy, which is the, the valve, you want that in the position that it's supposed to be in. Okay, so I'm stopping the saute function and I'm going to put it on beans. So this particular pressure cooker has saute, browning, pressure cook, slow cook, soup, stew, meat, chicken, rice, or risotto. None of them say beans, but I know beans are about 45 minutes. So like I said, since I pre-soaked, I'm going to do about 30. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to go on a pressure cook, and I'm going to put in thirty minutes. And let's see what happens. So we're going to go back to our normal spot, and we're going to talk about coffee. Alrighty, so today is May 23rd, and do you know what happened today on May 23rd, 2021? The first named storm of the Atlantic season reared its little ugly head. Yeah, we had our first named storm. And its name was Anna, A-N-A. Mm. So, one of the things that I do is I kind of have to watch the weather because I work in logistics and I work in logistics for one of the largest um, grocery companies in Texas. So, and this company prides itself on being the last to close and the first to open in any catastrophe. When we had our snowmageddon back in February, people in Texas were saying, if HEB was involved, if they were in charge, there wouldn't have been a problem. Everybody would have gotten through because, you know, they're probably right. <laughs> our logistics team is, is off the chart. But anyways, so... Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about barbecue. All right. So I move. So I come down to Texas. And remember, I'm originally from California. And to me, barbecue was just something you did in the backyard. I didn't know anything about briskets. To me, a brisket was something you got for St. Patrick's Day. And it was pickled. And yeah, you know, I didn't know anything about barbecue. Not a damn thing. And I come down here to Texas. And I'm trying to find a place to eat. And I'm looking around. And I see this place called Rudy's. And it's supposedly the worst barbecue in Texas. And I'm like, that's an interesting marketing scheme, but I'll give it a shot, right? So I go into Rudy's and 
I'm watching because I have no idea what to do. I don't know what to order. And I'm looking and the food smells good and it looks really, really good. And these boys have these giant, giant ovens that are filled with wood and smoke and meat. And I'm like, okay. And I'm watching people, you know, and I'm walking along and and so I see the people ahead of me and they pick up this tray that looks like the kind of trays that that you get soda delivered at at the grocery store. I'm like, okay, you know. And so they grab their little tray and they're all chit chatting and I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do. So the you know, I'm listening so that I, you know, try not to look like an idiot because I have no idea what the hell is going on. So the girl orders some sides and she tells the boy, I want this and this and this and this. And so the guy goes to this big oven smoky thing and pulls out this giant, you know, like brontosaurus burger steak thing. And I'm like, oh my God. And he gets out his knife and, bah, 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 bah. and he cuts off and he puts it on the scale, rips off this big sheet of butcher paper and sticks it in the soda tray and puts the meat on there and says, what side do you want? And the girl goes, I want this and I want that. And so he gets, you know, like a big scoop and whoop, scoop. And then he gets another big scoop, scoop, and, you know, gives that and puts that in the soda tray. And I'm like, okay. And then, you know, he, he's looking at her and going, you know, want bread? And she goes, yeah, I want bread. And, you know, and so he gives her like a half a loaf of white bread, like Wonder Bread. And I'm like, okay. And then he's all, y'all want pickles? And she's all, yeah pickles so he gives her like a handful of like like dill pickles like like hamburger pickles and then a handful of 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 um of onions like marinated onions you know he puts it all on that tray and he gives it to her and he's all y'all want sauce and she's all yeah 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 and so he gets another little bucket and you know puts this little thing of hot sauce and puts it on her tray and then she goes to the little cashier guy and and checks out we get sodas you know but you had to go inside to get soda so I like follow suit and I'm like ordering the same thing they ordered because you know, I had no idea what the hell was going on you know and the little boy slices me up some you know puts it down and you know and he gives me my gloops and my plop slops and gives me the the end dude and the end dude gives me my half a loaf of bread and I'm like okay more food I've ever seen in my whole life, you know, and so anyways, I go back inside, and I sit down, and, and I'm like, okay, I dig in, you know, and I'm like looking for napkins, I'm looking for forks, I'm looking for spoons, knives, anything, you know, and I'm like, you know, and I find, you know, and I see them over there, and I'm like, oh, yeah. You know, so I get myself a fork knife, and you know, but then I'm still looking for napkins, right? And there's this big, like, roll of paper towels hanging off the wall, and it's all napkins. I'm like, okay, you know, so I pull off a couple of sheets. I'm like, mm, guess I'm ready to eat, you know? So, <clears throat> no plates. I, I, you know, you're eating off a of butcher paper, and I'm like, okay. So I guess that's how you eat barbecue in Texas, you know, and, and it was really, really actually quite delightful. So, um, I thoroughly, completely enjoyed it. So, and as I've lived here for 15 years, I've become quite enamored with the different kinds of barbecue that's offered down here in Texas. Um, my neighbor behind us, every holiday i'm pretty sure that for memorial day he's gonna be out there he's got a big old smoker and he usually has something going and he does a dry rub and you know and and there are countless youtube videos on the wonderful world of barbecue texas style there are shows on on netflix and the food network that teaches you all about barbecue well i personally am a big fan of barbecue sides Okay, and so I grew up with corn, like like cream corn. So my mom used to make this thing called Wohi Lo Chowder, and she learned it in religious release, like a camp or something like that. And basically what it was, was that you sauteed bacon in a little bit of onions 
and you added a can of cream corn and a drained can of whole corn and that was wohi low chowder so that was one of my favorite dishes growing up it was one of my favorites and wohi low actually stood for work health love and like i said it was a camp there hi terry and hi terry i just love it that terry and terry are on like hey terry this is my friend terry terry this is my cousin terry so anyways so my mom used to make this wohi low chowder every once in a while and it was like one of my favorite dishes and i i make it periodically um i really really love it especially if i can get fresh corn because i prefer to use fresh corn over canned corn but so i go to one of these barbecue places and they have this thing called creamed corn so i'm kind of expecting you know maybe it's like wohi low chowder i don't know what to expect i've never had texas cream corn before and so what it is, I kid you not, is they take a big old pot, they fill it full of a bunch of cream corn and a bunch of whole corn, sounding familiar, and then they throw a friggin' brick of cream cheese into it and like a half a pound of butter. It's craziness, craziness. And oh my God, it's so friggin' good. I'm just like, I make that, you know, for Thanksgiving now, that's my corn side because it's just the bomb. I mean, it's absolutely the bomb. And so, so that's one side. Now, the other side that I absolutely love is green beans. And same thing, you saute some bacon, you saute it with onion, you add a can of, of canned corn, uh, not canned corn, you add a can of drained green beans, and you add a can of chopped tomatoes. And depending on which, you know, house you go to, sometimes that's all it is, is it's just onions, bacon, and beans. Sometimes it's with the tomatoes, sometimes it's without the tomatoes. It depends on who's making the, the sides for that particular barbecue joint. But one joint that we have here in town called Bill Miller's, um, I happen to be very good friends with the butchers because I delivered their meat for um, 12 years. And... Um, so they told me that what they do to make their beans special is that they add their special barbecue sauce. So I'm like, oh my God, but you know what they use? They don't make sausage. They use um, shanks. So they boil up their shanks, probably in a pressure cooker, and then they cut up the meat and they add that. And so you got these nice big chunks of beautiful meat in their green beans, which is just absolutely delicious um the other thing that you're gonna get if you ever go to barbecue is uh pickles and some places go like hog crazy about their pickles and other places they just serve you the big old dill pickles that you get at the grocery store um one of the things that i discovered down here that i don't really remember in california was what's called bread and butter pickles and they are like a sweetened pickle that it's it's not like a sweet pickle and it's not like a dill pickle it's kind of in between and it's called bread and butter and oh my gosh i love bread and butter pickles ah love them well one time i'm traveling with my girlfriend bambi and we're going to wichita falls which is the about as north of texas as you can get before you hit oklahoma and we stop at this place that has this giant rocker out front and the rocker um, is touted as the largest rocker in Texas or the world. I can't remember which. And we go in there and we stop and we have barbecue. And they have all of these pickles and, and, and canned goods readily available. And I was like, that looks interesting. And what it was, was pickled green tomatoes. And oh my gosh. Was it so good? It was like bread and butter, but it was green tomatoes and it was delicious. And so now this time of year when the tomatoes are beginning to come in and you see the green tomatoes um, showing up in the grocery stores and at the farmer's market, I'll buy like four or five green tomatoes. I'll cut them up. I'll make bread and butter. I'll make green, green tomato pickles. That's some good stuff. That's some very, very good stuff. Now, my absolute favorite favorite Texas barbecue story I have to tell you going to Houston and back is about 
going to Houston is about three, three and a half hour drive, four hours if you stop at Bucky's. And Bucky's is a whole other shebang, and I'll have to tell you about Bucky's one day. But anyway, so on the way, there's like this hexagon shaped building, and it's called Mike McCassa's Barbecue. And it always intrigued me because it was this dome. It was a hexagon building. It didn't look like any other barbecue joint I'd ever been in. And so I'm traveling down to Beaumont to, to, um, for a TOPS function. And TOPS is Take Off Pound Sensibly, which is a group that I belong to. And we're on the way back to San Antonio and we're hungry. And I tell my girlfriend, Bambi, I said, hey, Bambi, I said, you know, I always want to try it out this Mike Macasa's barbecue. Let's, let's check it out. She goes, okay, let's go, right? You know, so we go and there's enough cars in the parking lot for me to at least assume that, you know, it's a good barbecue place. And we go walking in and I kid you not, there is not a space on the wall, on the rafters, above the cashier station that does not have some kind of taxidermied critter. I kid you not. The place looked like Country Bear Jamboree Attic. I am telling you, there's a bear over here. There's a moose over there. There's a couple of elk. There is a deer. <clears throat> and Bambi and I are, you know, like, oh, we're already here. And the prices are good. Damn, it smells great. And I'm kind of like looking, kind of going, do you think maybe those squirrels might be in the barbecue? You know? <laughs> and she goes, I don't care. Let's eat. I'm like, okay. You know, let's be brave. You know, we wanted to try it. Okay. <laughs> you know, so I sit down and directly behind Bambi is this large black pig. <laughs> and I'm like, Bambi, is that a javelina? And she goes, yeah, that's a javelina. I'm like, wow. You know, and there's like bobcats and foxes and, and we're just like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, <laughs> but the food was off the charts. I mean, it was it was totally, totally friggin' good. And I'm all handling my money underneath the, the taxidermied squirrel. And I'm kind of like, okay, you know. So Bambi and I are just dying. And I, and I tell Bambi, I go, Bambi, Bambi, I don't think these critters are going to jump up and start singing anytime soon. Because honestly, that's kind of how I felt that I was like in Country Bear Jamboree, you know. And, you know, there was blood on the saddle. There was blood all around. My California friends understand exactly what I just sang. So, anyways, I'm just looking at this place and I'm just like, oh my freaking God. You know, it, it was just so bizarre. It was so bizarre. And so, you know, we eat our meal. We have a good time. We start heading back to, to San Antonio and we're dying. We're absolutely dying. And I kid you not, one block north of Macasa's barbecue joint was a taxidermy joint. So do you think those two were in cahoots? I lay you money. Those two were in cahoots. You know, it's like, hey, man, I'll just bag me the best damn nine-point buck or whatever the hell, you know. I don't know. And, you know, can you all fix it up for me? Sure, yeah, okay, you know. And, yeah, no. And the, you know, the other thing that I learned when I moved down here to Texas was the wonderful world of sausage. Because remember I mentioned, you know, a while back that, you know, Texas was found founded by a lot of Germans and Polish people. And they're really craftsmen when it comes to the wonderful world of sausage. And so when I was in California, you were lucky to get hot Italian or sweet Italian sausage. And that was it. Maybe, if you were lucky, your store carried like Emerald Lagasse. That was it. I mean, California did not have sausage. Not like Texas. Oh my gosh. So I get down here, there's Texas. There is all kinds of sausage. Sausage I've never even heard of. Some, something called boudin, which is just like, like a rice and liver, I think. I, I don't even know. And it's kind of, you know, and... Like, you know, in the grocery store, there's like this section and then there's this section and then there's, you know, the bigger sections, you know, the, the sausage section is about the size of kind of like the miscellaneous meat section of most normal grocery stores. 
So like a cap, uh, like like about a cabinet and a half is about how much sausage options that you have available. You have chicken sausage, you have chicken with poblados, you've got your uh, you got your typical Italian, sweet Italian, you've got this thing called wedding sausage, you've got um, like I said, the boudin, you've got the, and then like, that's not even talking about the smoked sausages, like the kielbasas of the world and that kind of stuff. So, I mean, you know, just, just amazing. Just sausage, 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 all kinds of sausage. Yeah, it's craziness. But anyway, so the beans are still cooking and I, I just really have no more barbecue stories, but, um, Oh, except, you know, where I got the recipe for these butter beans. Um, that was hysterical. Because there's this big old sign on the door that says, Butter beans are for in-house only. No to go on the butter beans. So I guess, and the place was packed. There was not a place to sit. You know why? Because their butter beans were so freaking delicious. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'll tell you. So that's... That's your story for tonight is barbecue in the wonderful world of Texas. And that, you know, honestly, that's just the tip of the iceberg. But I have gone to places where the, you know, you can just hear the angels going, oh, this is the best thing you've ever eaten. And I'm just like, oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever eaten. It's just, you know, it's just craziness. But, but just, I'm, I'm warning you, just be prepared. Somebody's going to give you a big sheet of paper and you're going to be like, I eat on paper? I'm like, yeah, yeah. So, and speaking of paper, I'm just gonna say this, and I understand that some people are just too tired to wash dishes, and they don't wanna wash dishes, but I belong to so many recipe groups that they're working their butts off, they're making these beautiful meals, and they're serving them on paper plates, and that's what they're photographing, and they're posting it up to the group. Look at this beautiful meal that I made. Look like it came out of a four-star restaurant, but it's on paper plates. And I'm just like, is it freaking kill you to wash a plate? I mean, like, come on. You did all of that trouble and you put it on a paper plate. And honestly, you know why I'm 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 like bent on paper plates? Is because when I was a kid we always had those little cheapy ones that were scallopy, and it didn't matter what you did, but they always fell apart. And it's you know, and you have to have the little bamboo tray to hold them to kind of like at least halfway hope and pray that they didn't trash on you, but they trashed on you anyways. Yeah, God, no, no. That's why I've got the corral. And you saw the corral last night. So, because, you know, I don't want to rumble with my plates. I don't want food to leak through and get all over my pants. I don't want it to fall apart while I walk across my kitchen. No. That's why I have China in my house. Well, okay, Corral. But anyway, so that's your story for tonight. I'll post a picture later of what the butter beans look like and whether or not the 15 minutes worked. But anyways, so that's it for tonight. Your little introduction to the wonderful world of barbecue sides in Texas. And them stuffed critters weren't going to jump up and start singing for me. <laughs> anyways, so don't forget, my dears. I love you very much. And we'll talk to you next time. All right. Bye-bye.